Mine's always to work on tight space. <laughs> it can't never be like in a big open area where you have lots of space to work. It's always got to be like this. It's always got to be inside of a freaking cabinet or under a freaking sink or something, man. We are having more electrical issues. Well, it's a ripple effect. So I'm gonna put my life on the line. Oh my god, here we go again. <laughs> <sighs> and play with electricity. Because if you remember, a few weeks ago, this happened. And we thought that was the end of it. Mm -hmm. Changed out the breaker, yep. clicked everything on, air conditioner works great, everything's cool. A mm -hmm. couple days later, started having an issue with the fireplace. Yes. But we thought that was just the fireplace yeah. going bad or having an issue or whatever. Yeah. Because it would be on and it would just turn off. It would just turn itself off. <laughs> and then we started hearing like clicking sounds in the yeah. island. You started hearing the clicking sounds. Yes. And you're like, what is that? I was clicking like, sound. Everybody be quiet. There's a, there's a sound. <laughs> so we noticed that the fireplace was popping off in conjunction with these clicking noises. Yes. So uh, I called Alliance mm -hmm. and I spoke with them about the fireplace issue and this clicking in the island. And they knew what it was. Yeah, they said, go check your breaker. And when I get to check the breaker, it turns out that the fireplace is on the same breaker that I replaced. Yeah. And in this island, in the very bottom, there's a little black box that looks like this. It's an automatic energy select switch. That's what it looks like. And what it does is, because our RV is prepped for a dishwasher, Yes. if we had a dishwasher in here, this thing would transfer power between the fireplace and the dishwasher so it doesn't overload the Listen. circuit. Yeah. But we don't have a dishwasher. But when we had that arc issue in the breaker box, I think it caused a short in this box yep. and it's sending signals in the wrong directions or it's telling... It's trying to transfer. It is. So it's drawing power away from the fireplace, trying to push it to a dishwasher that doesn't even exist. <laughs> yeah. And it kicks the fireplace off. Yeah. So this box is the problem and we're going to be changing this guy out today. I think it's going to be an easy thing. But the, the, the way that we troubleshot that was um, we because there's a plug in the back of the fireplace mm -hmm. where you yeah. pull the drawer out where the fireplace plugs into that. And what we did was we unplugged the fireplace from there, mm -hmm. ran an extension cord to another outlet, which is on a different breaker, and turned the fireplace on. Works fine. Not a problem. So okay. we know that it is, this is the problem. Box. So hopefully it's a problem in this box and not somewhere else in the system. <laughs> Where there will be a part three coming. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get her done. Yeah, uh, I think it's going to be quick and easy. Yeah. We'll see. We'll let you know. And if you're still watching this, spoiler alert, I didn't die. No. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear <even. laughs> All right. Kick the power off. All right. That box. This is the new box right here. The one that's going to be going in. And the old box is in here underneath this bottom drawer so we have to get this bottom drawer out. I've got the drawer out now and you can see in here that is where the box is. There's only the four screws that hold the thing down. Once I get it out of there um, we'll open the lid and then what I'll do is I'll take a picture with my phone <laughs> to make sure I know how the wiring is and then uh, put the new box in and use that picture as a reference to put the wires back where they belong. All right, this looks pretty straightforward here because you see this cord that runs in right here. The white wire runs to that first probe and it's black wire runs to that first one here. Well, that second cord that goes in, it's white wire goes to the second. And then this black wire goes to the second one. And then this third wire, it's white connection goes to the third one. And the black one goes to the third one. And all the ground wires go over to that um, grounding station over there. I got that first wire out. That's the one that goes into here. And so now I have to run this. It has a little, like a little catch tab in there. So you gotta push that wire through there. And basically it crimps it so that it, the wire doesn't pull itself back out. So it's a pain because it's new and it's tight. So you have to shove that wire in there. Are you having fun yet? 
No. And because all the power is off, the air conditioner is not on. And so it's getting hotter in here. <laughs> Why is always the work in tight space? It can never be like in a big open area where you have lots of space to work. It's always got to be like this. It's always got to be inside of a freaking cabinet or under a freaking sink or something, man. It can never be easy. I got all three wires in. Now I just can put the ground wires in and <laughs> I thought I took a picture of it. Apparently I did not take a picture of it. So <laughs> I went to go check my gallery and my phone and there's no picture. So hopefully <laughs> no reference. <laughs> hopefully I got it right. <laughs> I, will, I counted right. <laughs> all right. Installed. Hope it's right. <laughs> All right, it's in. Um, there you have it. All wired up. Not terribly hard. Um, it does have a diagram on the on the lid of this thing too, so I guess I really don't need a picture, but. Uh, just follow the diagram and for me I just transferred one cable at a time that was just, so I don't get confused and so I don't screw it up because like I said I don't want to I don't want to burn down the RV or screw something up real bad so and I don't want to tell you the wrong thing if you have the same issue and you're going to change yours out I don't want to tell you how to potentially start a fire in your RV <laughs> you call me up like um, you owe me an RV sir so I'm gonna head out I'm gonna turn the breaker back on and then I'm gonna turn the breaker back on down here and, but, uh, I need you to let me out, bud. Can I go outside? <laughs> Am I allowed to go outside? I, I think mommy's gonna have to get him out of the way. <laughs> then you can go back. <laughs> Going back on. Well, I heard a click down there when I clicked it on. Yeah. Is it a good click or a bad click? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll find out here in a second because now that the, that breaker is back on, the uh, power is back on. Um, we're going to plug the fireplace back into its original space yeah. in the back of the drawer. And hopefully, um, when we kick it on, it'll run without kicking itself off. Hopefully, there won't be a lot of clicking going on in the island. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Oh my truth. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is already super hot in here. Now I gotta crank this thing on. And I'm, I'm getting hit right in the face with this warm air, but I need to make sure that it stays on for long enough to uh, troubleshoot because last time it was kicking off after only a couple of minutes. So I need at least for, let this run for a few minutes. Make sure it doesn't kick off. Make sure you don't hear any clicking around in this, in this island from that transfer switch. It works. Still standing. Man, I've been telling you, I'm basically an electrician. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. It, uh, but I will tell you this. If you're having an issue with your fireplace, it might not be your fireplace. That is if correct. your rig is prepped for a dishwasher, it could be that switch, that relay switch. Yeah. So check that first. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're hearing clicking, especially, that's probably it. It probably had a short in there somewhere. You change out that box for $85 versus a fireplace for 250, 250. bucks. Yeah. That's a lot, lot better. Oh, yeah. So, and it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was a little cumbersome just because we were filming it. Yeah. And because all those wires were generally really tight. super tight. Yeah. So it was hard to, like, get your fingers in there to get the wires plugged in and stuff but yeah. all in all not bad um i like the process that we did one wire at a time so we didn't screw anything up but there is a yeah. diagram on the top of the box and we ordered this uh transfer switch yeah. through uh rvpartscenter.com so we'll put a link in the description too they have everything rv parts they're based out of california but it actually got to us really fast yeah it was a projection to be here like five six days and it got here in like two yeah. So really fast That's shipping cool. for those guys. Mm -hmm. Crisis averted. Fireplace works. Yes. 
even though it's 80 degrees outside, we had to run the fireplace for like 10 minutes to make sure Just that it was going to be good. And yeah. <laughs> um, we still are using the fireplace in the evenings. Yeah, it's cool in so the evenings. So it's nice to have the fireplace back without having the extension cord running, running out, out of it. and plugged in somewhere else because it looks crazy. Yeah. And so uh, all in all, easy peasy. I'll take your questions. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie's back in her spot. We were first at the first part of the video. She's all salty because she's on the run. She's like, "I'm never on this side." I wasn't that. that. I was not <laughs> like that. <laughs> and I was like, "I gotta have the box over here so I can pick it up off the thing and show it." And she's like, "All right." Well, I could have fan awaited the box for you. You want to reshoot it? No, no, I don't want to reshoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm done. Anyway, we hope this helped you out. Um, stick around for a few seconds because we're gonna honor a fallen mm -hmm. hero. You want to get involved with helping us help vets everything you need to know right down there in the description yep. appreciate you watching we'll see you next time <laughs> bye <laughs>